Next week, the Reverend Al Sharpton will be hosting a call to action event in New York. The four day conference will include national, state, and local leaders, as well as prominent African American organizational leaders and celebrities. The purpose? identify the issues affecting our community and formulate a plan of action to combat them. Joining me now to talk about the National Action Network's annual convention is the organization's founder, the Reverend Al Sharpton. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Rowan. All right, then let's just jump right into it. First of all, there's going to be a two, uh, you know, live broadcast here on TV One uh, of this town hall forum. A lot of folks on the panel. Uh, I will be uh, hosting it, Tom Jonah as well. Most important thing, and we've talked about this here, we're not interested in a conversation. This is about finding what people are going to do That's right. to take idea and get to the end result. Well, let me, let me just be candid with your audience. Uh, when we came up with the idea uh, to have the leaders of various civil rights organizations, uh, Mark Morial of the Urban League, uh, Ben Jealous, uh, Congressman Clyburn, Majority Whip, and, and said, let's all sit down, but not go through sound bites, but really have a timetable to lay out what we're going to do, when we're going to do it. Uh, and I asked you, would you moderate? And you said, listen, I'm not going <laughs> to spare y'all, and I want to see y'all leave there so we can have a timeline that we'll judge y'all by or get somebody else to do it. I'm tired of y'all playing to the cheap seats. So that's why we asked you to do it, which is why I'm not moderating it. I'm taking a seat with other leaders, and you got to press us, because I think this is a time black America needs to not only press the president, which they should do, but press the leadership, the activists. Everybody needs to be a Accountable. This one uh, size fits all is over. I think that I've got to state this is what Nash Action Network is going to do in these areas when NACP, Urban League, Black Caucus, and experts come in. And I don't think any Ameri Black America's prosecuting attorney is rolling mark. So we, <laughs> we intend to be able to live up to that. But I think if we don't set a bar, we never reach it in terms of achieving something for our people. We just talked with uh, Mayor Nutter of Philadelphia. Who will also be there, by the way. And one of the things that he talked about is how they have been able to affect change here uh, is that they have been they focused on neighborhoods they focused on individuals where they are his whole deal is when it comes to clean up clean up just the pay piece right in front of your house just like Nehemiah rebuilding the wall right. of Jerusalem right. uh, and so uh, with that do you believe that part of the problem today is that we have the meeting part down what I call meet talk disperse but not meet mobilize act the mobilizing part is really what is missing to move people and to keep them involved and sustain their involvement. A mobilizing toward a real achievable agenda, I think, is what's missing. I think the generations leading up to now did what it could do and should do, meet, try to galvanize. But now that you have access to more power and influence, mayors, two black governors, a black in the White House, the, the, if we're having the same type of meeting, then we don't understand that we're in a different environment. It's like when Nelson Mandela won the uh, South African presidency, ANC won the election, he said, now we've got to prove we can govern. And I think that we are now, the 21st century civil rights challenge is equality. That's about implementation and governing. And I think that the conversation we will have live on TV One with you as the moderator next Saturday is going to change how these conversations are had now. It's not just new commitments and new players, but it's also a new model on we should not have any kind of conversations unless at the end of the conversation we could say, these people committed to do this, now let's follow up and see if this happens. In the interview I did with you for Ebony Magazine and their power issue, one of the things that you talked about uh, was the fact that if we go, if we look at four years, let's say the president only has one term, or let's say he has two terms, mm -hmm. if we look at those four years and those eight years and did not make any movement on those critical issues that affect black America, what the heck did we do? Nothing. It was symbolic. And, 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 it, and it will mean as much. I remember when I was a kid, uh, you know, I grew up, Reverend Jesse Jackson, I was uh, youth director under him in New York. So I was a kid. He said, I'm going to take you and your mother uh, to see uh, Jackie Robinson, Jackie Robinson's house. And uh, I went, when we left, they were all excited. My mother met Jackie Robinson. And uh, J uh, Jesse Jackson was, and they said, well, you seem pretty cool. I said, it was all right. They said, what do you mean all right? Because to me, 
I was I never knew when blacks couldn't play baseball. So Jackie Robinson being the first baseball player black meant more to them, my mother and Reverend Jackson, than me. Because by the time I got of age, Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, everybody was playing. Larry Doby, all kind of players. If we don't do anything now in 20, 25 years, Barack Obama's first black president won't mean anything to our grandchildren unless it changes fundamentally the conditions of America and blacks in America. Or me or any of the contemporary civil rights leaders today won't mean anything. And what I'm saying is we can't get so caught up on tomorrow's paper that we don't look at history. If we don't change where we're going historically, we're just doing symbolic uh, gestures that will mean nothing in the long span of time. I asked the president uh, when I interviewed him for our uh, Living the Dream special that aired on TV One when it comes to being challenged by African Americans on a particular agenda. Uh, and here's what I, and, and with Justice John Paul Stevens retiring on the Supreme Court, when he had his first appointment, it was interesting watching all of these lists. There were no African Americans on the list. They were saying, well, he's going to appoint a woman uh, to replace uh, Sandra, Dale, uh, Sandra O'Connor. Okay, great. Not a single African American woman. And I, t I say to black organization leaders, how could you not say anything? I know he's black, but to me, you still can put forward names to right. say, wait a minute, our people must be considered for the job too. And we should. And, and uh, ironically, with the announcement coming this weekend, we're going to deal with that and come out of the convention with a list of names that we would recommend, and I would hope a united list that all the civil rights groups should uh, propose to the president. I think it is our job to press the president f toward what blacks need, toward what civil rights need. I think it's unrealistic to expect him to press us on that. He has to respond to us, just like labor, just like women, just like others. I think what others are asking him to do to lead the movement, he must respond to the movement, and we intend to build that movement. Well, again, I think I think that is what's, what's most vital, and even he recognizes that, but everybody has a role to play, and if folks don't stay in a lane, then that's how you have crash and you have accidents. <laughs> that's exactly right. That's why I'm going to stay in my lane and let you be the whole booth <laughs> monitor next Saturday. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a great conversation. Thank you for uh, doing it. Not a problem. And folks, again, tune in to TV One next Saturday at 11 a.m. when Tom Jonah and yours truly will bring you two hours of live coverage of the National Action Network's forum. It's all about committing to action to advance the African-American community. But let me be clear, not just the people on stage, but you at home, you have a job as well.